Hussam, do you, from a, obviously you work in Al Azhar, Dar al Iftah, do you, are you familiar with the kind of conversations and debates around this? I agree with Faiza. I think her art's really interest, interesting and impressive. I like the Frida Kahlo plug as well. I can see that she's probably influenced you. Uh, we can talk about that as well. So yeah, yeah. What's, what do you think about like religiously and art and so forth? What's your, what's your views? Well, thank you so much for the question. Uh, uh, first of all, I, 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 I don't work at Al Azhar uh, or at Dar al Ifta. I work at Al Azhar Fatwa Global Center. And uh, of course, I, I'm aware of uh, all the, the debates surrounding this issue. But what, I, what, I, what I'd like to highlight here is even uh, the debate itself, it's about uh, like statues. And there is a point or there is a reason. So even when it comes to like pictures like this or drawings like this, so the, the prevailing opinion within the Islamic jurisprudence is permissibility. Uh, with that being said, uh, another point that uh, I'd like to stress here is the principle when it comes to uh, Islamic jurisprudence and the art, definitely it is, it is permissible. And, and this is why we find uh, uh, all uh, the, these artistic, uh, expressions uh, all uh, across uh, the centuries uh, produced and made by Muslims. Uh, so this is why even when they speak of the details, then they speak of uh, the point uh, behind an artistic work, but they never say that in principle, as we unfortunately uh, witness uh, the, the, the discourse or the stance coming from uh, certain uh, groups, or entities that uh, claim to be acting or uh, or representing uh, the voice of Islam uh, on, on this matter. So this is my point that uh, many Muslim scholars like Al Ghazali and others they speak very highly of art and artistic expressions and and the role of art in, on, uh, on uh, and when it comes to uh, when it comes to promoting a noble. Uh, issues and noble objectives. So I, I, I don't uh, fully endorse uh, the idea that in principle that they are contradictory or any form of art uh, that involves uh, the facial expressions of a human being uh, is, per, is permissible. It is quite the opposite as a matter of fact. I would also add, if I may, <clears throat> um, like the, the, this, this um, I would argue that this um, arbitrary divide between art and religion. I, I really think it's an arbitrary divide because if you think, if you look at religion and institutions that represent religions, everything about these institutions are, is artistic. You, you, you look at a mosque from outside and the architecture of a mosque is, is, is a piece of art. You look at a church, you, look, you go into a cathedral, Everything in that cathedral and in that church is is artistic. The same thing in a synagogue. So, like, I mean, the Quran itself, like, looking at like the callig the, the the cover of it, the calligraphy is 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 art. So, um, and if we just look at one form of art, which is Arabic calligraphy, the history and the origins of it is Islamic. Um, so, I I absolutely think that. Um, those those um, comments on on the, the the divide between religion and um, and art is extremely arbitrary, and I I would not think I I, I don't want to dismiss it, but um, there's something to be said about like how we create that divide um, and pretending as if that the religion doesn't include art within its discourse. It definitely does, and it's expressed a lot of times. And I mean, like, so this, if we think of just Sufi, like the, the Madhab of Sufi, the, the, the way that they chant, I mean, that's art. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that's what I think. Why do you think so many people are, uh, feel threatened by art? This is an open question to everyone. Because there is, a la there is lack of knowledge and there is uh, this, uh, I would use the word arbitrary, as uh, Shaza has put it. To, to, to create or even to impose this dichotomy that Islam is is by is by is inherently anti-social, anti-artistic, 
and and this is why it is important to have the educated people to speak out uh, to speak out not only uh, on the grounds of their own personal experience or, or their own personal interpretations but from a scholarly perspective and uh, and 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 basing basing their uh, opinions or their stances uh, on uh, scholarly grounds. So this is why, as I mentioned, you, you find the, the principal stance when it comes to the very well-known Muslim scholars like Al Ghazali and many others. And I can I, I can count so many when it comes when it comes to Azhar how they, they they stand in support of art and they st they, they stand in support of all forms of art, uh, as I have mentioned earlier, that promote uh, noble objectives and noble causes. And, and, and the realm is very wide open for this. So to answer more specifically the question, why is, why is that there is this uh, uh, notion that uh, religion or Islam, Islam per se is, is opposed to art? because there is so much uh, lack of knowledge and i would say that sometimes it is even systematic uh, to make it like uh, this is the, the the overall or this is the dominant uh, stance and this is why uh, we need to speak up and to clarify things when it comes to this point and others related to them oz could i add quickly to what you just said sure and then sam afterwards uh, ask yourself sean sure. yeah yeah, I was just going to agree um, whole, wholeheartedly and elaborate a little bit. I mean, I'll make my personal view very clear. It says, if I'm not mistaken, in the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God loves beauty. Um, and it is indeed found everywhere in the religion. Uh, but to, yes, expand on his point, I think if art means, it's very hard to define art, but if it means free self-expression, if it means the abstract representation of truth, like these are things that are, or can be very threatening to the ruling class. And I think politics and religion mix here. I mean, politics and, uh, sorry, religion and art are indeed intertwined, but politics and religion, that's another debate. And maybe this is an example of where politics can have a very harmful effect on religion, I think, I would hazard. Really interesting point. We'll, we'll cover that in a second. Uh, Samah, you wanted to say something? Um. Yeah, so the thing that I wanted to say that like, uh, first of all, the the issue of like, uh, the restriction in art, I think it belongs to just uh, some specific schools. It's not like <coughs> it is Islam, like, uh, say this is the drawing this haram or not haram, because even in the Islamic uh, history, uh, like there is uh, periods and times of the history where art is like um, is a nourished thing and uh, develop things like Dawla al Umawiyya, Dawla al Abbasiyya, all this in the Islam. Like there is this is Islamic art is not only just uh, uh, like uh, architecture things. There is also painting. Um, portrait and all all these things and uh, answering your question osama uh, why people uh, like in the culture uh, uh, fear uh, art i think uh, i agree with sean because i think uh, art it challenges the beliefs that people have and people they don't have similar beliefs and uh, in our culture, in the Arab and the Middle Eastern culture, uh, most people, like, they are not only concerned about themselves. They also, there is something in our society makes people want to, want this person to do this, that person to do that, to intervene and to have some kind of control. Maybe sometimes it's from uh, good intention, sometimes, People are, are not very aware of what they are doing. Sometimes they mean that they want to control and shape everything. Uh, so many people we find they feel like we don't want to do this. Also the, the uh, political systems in, in our countries, um, if, if we look at them, most of them are not democratic. So they tend to uh, 
also to clash with with the freedom of, of art um yeah. that's really interesting um I, I wanted to uh, ask, after Lawrence's point, uh, and hopefully Lawrence can introduce himself as well, uh, Angie on the call, the, the other artist who are sharing her work now, she's from a Druze background, so I want to touch up upon if she faces similar kind of pushback uh, in the Druze community or not, or if they're more tolerant of this kind of thing. But yeah, Lawrence, please go ahead and then we'll discuss that with, uh, with Angie. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name's Lawrence Joffe, um, and I work with um, Osama, for a few years, well, originally at the Arab Jewish Forum. That's that's where he did some work before. And I know Osama and seen him in person. Shata, hello. We've known each other for a few years as well, but just virtually. And Hassan also, uh, it's nice to see you in person. Moving, moving images as well. So that, that's great. And everybody. Likewise, oh, so Lawrence. Thank, thank you. you. And, and, and nice Samach to too, good to see you. Um, yeah, no, I just wanted to uh, ask one, well, two or three points if I may. The one is based on what Sean was saying, and I met Sean before as well. Um, it, it suddenly occurred to me that the question is what's legitimate on the street, as it were. So, for instance, in society and politics, you could have uh, there's in so many societies, depending on the background, there's still something of a fear of the individual artist. There's somebody the named artist, and remember, the named artist is is almost a new innovation in the West, and even more so in other cultures. Um, and yet art is acceptable, it seems, for promotion by advertising. There's, there's, there's no, um, so there seems to be a paradox that, that somebody is expressing themselves is seen as a, as a threat, but somebody who's working for a, a mercantile interest in order to promote a good or a product is suddenly outside the ideological plane. And then the other question, I mean, I had other comments about Judeo-Christian and Islamic traditions about um, art being in a sense, the imitation of God, in the, in the sense, maybe that's the fear of the artist, because I know in the Torah it says, God created man in his own image. So if man then creates something else, whose image is he creating in? Is that, in the Islamic context, like shirk? Is that putting a division between God and his creation? And the third question, really, um, is, or observation, is that within what I know of the Islamic cultural traditions, you have such a variety. So on one hand, you might have Shia typography, which shows Ali and the, the Imams, you know, very graphic images. Whereas <clears throat> uh, the uh, Saudi tradition, or Hanbali, they don't want any decoration at all. So there seems, in practice, there seems to be a, a, a great variety of expression or tolerance uh, according to local traditions observation. Sorry, I slightly overloaded things there, but just a few ideas I had. 